everyone, it's Melanie Ham, and today I'm going to teach you how to make a bench cushion. I've got a vintage bench that I recently bought when I redid my balcony space. You can check that out in the last video. So I made this cushion in under two hours and that was with filming. So really easy project. I really tried to simplify this down so that a beginner can do this project. Maybe even a novice sewer um, who doesn't sew all the time. Great beginner kind of project for you guys. So let's jump right in and I will show you how to make this bench cushion. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is measure your bench or whatever cushion size you want to do. And I'm going to teach you how to do this all for your own sizing. Um, so mine's 42 long and 15 deep. And then um, this, this was prepackaged foam that I found. It happened to be 15 inches. And so that's why I picked it because then I wouldn't have to do too much cutting. You can buy this by the yard at Joanne Fabrics though, if you would like. So this last piece obviously is not gonna fit, so I measured how much was left. Then I went to my sewing studio and I am marking on the foam here how wide it needs to be. And this is just a fabric marker, any sort of pen will be fine. And then I'm using a box cutter and I'm gonna cut it. It doesn't have to be super um, flush cut because we're gonna be wrapping it with batting. So it's okay that it's kind of butchered up here a little bit. <laughs> um, you can pick different uh, heights of your foam as well. This one was two inches, you can pick higher if you would like. Now I'm gonna use Fabri-Tac glue and just glue the pieces together just so that they stay together when you want to take your cushion in and out of the cover. That way it won't be um, falling apart at all. It's just a, uh, just a precaution. You don't have to do this step, but I would recommend it. All right, now here is the end piece that I cut. And because of the batting, I'm gonna put the cut side on the end. Um, so here is just the glue application. So you can see about how much I'm using um, if you have fabri -Tac glue, it's a great um, glue to have on hand if you sew it all. I love that one. So here I am gluing the flush ends together. This is a high loft batting, size four. Um, I got it at Joanne Fabrics as well. Make sure you're using the coupons. And it's really thick, which is what I was looking for. You can pick whatever you would like though, because I wanted it to have a rounded corner. So I'm gonna just wrap the batting around the foam and I wanna cut the batting so that it's flush. So we don't have any ridges that we could see underneath our fabric. And then I'm gonna cut the ends and we'll wrap it kind of like a present. That way you can see right here, um, that way you can see that it will look nice on the ends as well. And I'm gonna use some glue and actually glue the batting into place. And again, this is for making it easier to take our cushion in and out of our fabric um, when it needs to be washed. That way it's nice and secure and we don't have any batting kind of coming undone and getting bunched underneath our fabric. So the great thing about this glue is that it dries really quickly so you don't have to stand there holding your batting in place while it dries. It dries really, really quick. Now I want you to re-measure your cushion. Mine is about 43, so we've added an inch in batting and it's about 15 and a half uh, deep. So let's go over this. So for my bench, we had 42 by 15 with no batting. With batting is 43 by 15 and a half. Those are the measurements we wanna use in order to cut our fabric. So cut 44 by 16 and a half. If you're using these kind of similar measurements, we need to add our seam allowance so that we can cut the fabric and sew it all together and have it fit. Okay, so we need two of those larger pieces for the top and the bottom, and then we need our side pieces, which are gonna be also 44 inches. And however tall, you know, however high your foam is with the batting, mine's three and a half. So um, I will have all of this in the description box down below so that you can modify this for your own bench cushion. But this is the thought process behind making our fabric um, cut so that it's gonna fit properly. Now our side pieces, like our short sides, are gonna be 16 and a half by three and a half. And for the Velcro opening side, we need two of those pieces, okay? We need two of those on one of the short sides, and I'll show you why in just a moment. Now make sure you measure your bench before you go buy your fabric. This is upholstery weight fabric, so it's 54 inches wide. If you use a cotton fabric that's 44 inches wide, you will need to double check that so that you buy the right number of yardage for your bench. So um, more of those details will be in the description box below in case you need some more clarification. 
Now we're gonna make our Velcro enclosure, the short side. So grab your two short sides and we are going to iron uh, just about a quarter of an inch. And then we're going to iron another hem here. And it's gotta be wide enough so that our Velcro can go on that little hem. So however wide Velcro is, it's fine. You can use variations for what I'm doing. The biggest thing for this side piece is that it has to equal three and a half inches wide once you've done both of these pieces. I'll go over that in a minute. Um, but just make sure you're not uh, using up too much fabric because then once we do both of these pieces, there's our raw edges, we're gonna attach the Velcro, but you see here, this is where the Velcro is gonna attach. And the width of this um, piece of fabric needs to be three and a half to match our other side pieces. That is the biggest thing to keep in mind. So you can see here, I've got about four inches, which is great, bigger is better. And I can just make some marks and trim off one of the sides of my piece here. You can see me using my friction pen. Friction pens are great because you can iron it and the markings will come off. So you can do it this way. You can make your hems so that it's it equals exactly three and a half. Just make sure that it's not smaller than that because then we're gonna treat this just like one of the other sides of our cushion piece. Okay, so we need to um, now finish this up. Now also keep in mind that the Velcro has to match up in a way for it to connect, right? So the Velcro has to be on one side facing up and on the other side facing down. So. As you're putting your stuff together, just be sure that your Velcro is facing the right direction so that we can sew it into place and have it work properly for our enclosure. Velcro can be a little unruly, so I do recommend pinning it in place. Also be sure that if you're using a smaller Velcro piece than the entire width of your fabric, then make sure that it's the same on each side so you have, um, you know, you're, they're both lined up correctly and that you have the same kind of spacing. So just to be aware of that, you can see here, I'm testing it out before I take it over to the sewing machine. And this is how the enclosure will end up looking. So it's nice and clean. Take it over to the sewing machine and we're just gonna sew it down this hem. Be sure that you catch the Velcro um, when you are sewing. Also wanna note that I am using a polyester thread. I usually am 100% cotton thread girl, but when you are sewing with um, you know, outdoor material, upholstery fabric, things that are gonna have a lot more you know, wear and maybe even in the sun, we definitely wanna use polyester thread. So go ahead and sew the Velcro onto our piece. Um, just however, I'm using my presser foot here and just sort of going along that way. Here's how it's looking. And now we'll just set that aside and use it just like we're gonna be using the other walls and the sides of our bench cushion. All right, so here is our sides. So these are the short sides. We have two of those. And then we have two of our long sides. Now we need to, um, place these right sides together. So my fabric, it's difficult to tell which is the right side and which is the wrong side. There's actually not even a right and a wrong side, but make sure it's right sides together and then sew those down at the sewing machine. Go ahead and pin all four corners and then you can sew them all at one time. Here they are pinned and ready to go. Just be sure right sides together. I'm gonna emphasize that a lot as we go through the sewing portion because that's one of those easy things to overlook and it's difficult to see on mine. So make sure that you are placing all of your side pieces together and pinning them, and then we will head over to the sewing machine. So this is how the sides should be looking. It should look similar to this. Now let's sew down. We're gonna use a half inch seam allowance. Um, there should be a marking on your sewing machine for a half inch. And then do not backstitch, okay? That will make sense later, but don't backstitch, trust me on that. We're just gonna stitch down using our half inch seam allowance and go ahead and do that on all four corners. Do not backstitch. Once that's done, go back to your table and we are gonna actually unpick a half inch down from that corner. I know it sounds weird. If you watched my poof video, this is the same idea. 
we are going to be attaching the top and the bottom to our sides here and we need that's why we don't backstitch because we need to unpick at our seam allowance whatever your seam allowance is a half inch is a good seam allowance for this type of project so take the corner of the top piece or the bottom piece it doesn't matter and we're gonna line up those corners and then we're gonna pin everything into place and do that going all the way around on all four sides, being sure that you unpick everything and everything is nice and lined up. Once you do the prep work for this, when you take it over to the sewing machine, it'll be a super quick, easy kind of sewing a straight stitch. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do all these corners. And um, you know, just be sure that you don't unpick too much. You wanna unpick about a half inch or if you're using a quarter inch seam allowance, I recommend a half inch, but just whatever that is, that's what you wanna do. Having some good, nice, sharp pins for this project will be really handy. I will have my favorite ones, these flower head pins linked in the description box underneath the video. Do that all the way around. Now you want your flappy parts, your side walls facing up, okay? So we're gonna start doing our half inch seam allowance going all the way around, but be sure that your sides are facing up. That is really, really important to make sure that you can accomplish this next step. So we're gonna sew down. I start in the middle of one of the long sides, and then once we get down here to our corner, I want you to make sure that here's our flappy bit, and I want you to make sure that that will line up with the bottom edge. See right here, line it up. Now you'll see where the fold is. We are gonna stitch right up to that fold, and then we're gonna back stitch. Okay, so here we go, sewing down. We're gonna get to the fold, back stitch, and then we're going to cut our threads, lift up your presser foot, and then what we're gonna do is place the flappy bit onto the other side, and then we're gonna turn our work, and you can see here where we stopped that thread, and then we're gonna back stitch beginning from the edge of our fabric this time, so ignore the, the fold, we're gonna back stitch, and then we're going to continue down with our half inch seam allowance. Okay, let's do it one more time. I know that might've been confusing. Once we get down here to the corner, make sure that this corner piece is lined up with the bottom edge. And you can see that fold. Stitch down, back stitch at the fold, and then trim your threads and flip your work, placing the wall of your fabric onto the other edge and then press our foot down and back stitch from the edge of the fabric this time and continue with your half inch seam allowance do this all the way around on all four corners um, and then once you get back to the beginning we're gonna back stitch again to finish this off right now that wasn't so bad I know that this kind of stuff seems harder than it is now I want you to check all of your corners and be sure that there's no little holes, if, that, if, the, if there are, then you need to fix them now. Now we're going to pin our other piece onto the other side. Make sure, again, right sides together. So the right side, the pretty side of the fabric should be on the inside. You should be looking mostly at the wrong side. So go ahead and do the same thing. Pin it all the way around. Make sure that those corners are matched up properly with a little bit of unpicking to be sure that we can use that half inch seam allowance. Again, be sure the sides of your fabric are facing up when you go over to the sewing machine and it's the same exact process. You can see it right here. Fold it down so that it lines up along the bottom. Back stitch at the fold and then cut your threads. A little, it's a little bit more maneuvering with the additional bulk of the fabric, but it's the exact same process. So you're gonna go ahead and finish this going all the way around and you can go ahead and finish it all up when you get back to your backstitch area. Backstitch it because we have our Velcro opening. So then we're gonna use that to flip our cushion right side out and put our foam in there. We are almost done. See how easy that was? Now on the Velcro, be sure that the picky side of the Velcro is kind of like rolled up into your fabric because it will catch on the batting. And then basically put your foam, your cushion part inside your fabric enclosure and we are so close to being done. Stick your arm in there and make sure that those corners are popped out. That will make it look a lot nicer. And um, yeah, we're basically done. Now again, 
in the description box below the video on a desktop device you can hit show more under the video and it will open up on a mobile device there's a small arrow to the right of the title of the video the additional details will be there so the measurements tips on how much you should buy you know your fabric yardage calculations and all that stuff will be there as well as a lot of the materials that I use do a little happy dance because now you are done and you've got a washable um, cushion here. I'm putting it in place. I also do recommend, I didn't mention this before, to pre-wash your fabric if you want to avoid any weird shrinking when you do go ahead and wash it for the first time. So keep that in mind. I also created some pillows matching my triangle pillows with some outdoor fabric that I purchased. And I used my envelope pillow enclosure video. I will link that below. That's an oldie, but goodie. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and that was helpful. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I also invite you guys to check out my website, melaniekham.com for more tutorials and um, just a better way to connect with me over there. So I'd love to see you over on my blog and um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.